In physics, the pointing vector represents the directional energy flux density of an electromagnetic field. The SI unit of the pointing vector is the watt per square meter. It is named after its inventor John Henry Pointing who first derived it in 1884. Oliver Heaviside and Nikolai Umov also independently discovered the pointing vector. Definition In Pointing's original paper and in many textbooks, the pointing vector is defined as where bold letters represent vectors and E is the electric field vector, H is the magnetic field vector. This expression is often called the Abraham form. The pointing vector is usually denoted by S or N. In the microscopic version of Maxwell's equations, this definition must be replaced by a definition in terms of the electric field E and the magnetic flux density B. It is also possible to combine the electric displacement field D with the magnetic flux density B to get the Minkowski form of the pointing vector, or use D and H to construct yet another version. The choice has been controversial. Phi for AL Summarize and to a certain extent resolve the century-long dispute between proponents of the Abraham and Minkowski forms. The pointing vector represents the particular case of an energy flux vector for electromagnetic energy. However, any type of energy has its direction of movement in space, as well as its density. So energy flux vectors can be defined for other types of energy as well, e.g., for mechanical energy. The UMOV pointing vector discovered by Nikolai UMOV in 1874 describes energy flux in liquid and elastic media in a completely generalized view. Interpretation The pointing vector appears in Poynting's theorem, an energy conservation law, where Jf is the current density of free charges and U is the electromagnetic energy density for linear, non-dispersive materials given by where E is the electric field, D is the electric displacement field, B is the magnetic flux density, H is the magnetic field. The first term in the right-hand side represents the electromagnetic energy flow into a small volume, while the second term subtracts the work done by the field on free electrical currents which thereby exits from electromagnetic energy as dissipation, heat, etc. In this definition, bound electrical currents are not included in this term, and instead contribute to S and U. For linear, non-dispersive and isotropic materials, the constitutive relations can be written as where epsilon is the permittivity of the material, mu is the permeability of the material. Here epsilon and mu are scalar, real-valued constants independent of position, direction, and frequency. In principle, this limits Poynting's theorem in this form to fields in vacuum and non-dispersive linear materials. A generalization to dispersive materials is possible under certain circumstances at the cost of additional terms, adding the curl of a vector field. Since the pointing vector occurs in Poynting's theorem only through its divergence S, and since the divergence of any curl is zero, one can add the curl of any vector field to the pointing vector and the resulting vector field S will still satisfy Poynting's theorem. The theory of special relativity, however, in which energy and momentum are defined locally and invariantly via the stress-energy tensor, shows that the given expression for the pointing vector is unique. It is generally argued that Maxwell equations are manifestly Lorentz covariant while the electromagnetic stress energy tensor follows from the Maxwell equations, thus the M momentum defined from the M tensor certainly respects the principle of relativity. However a recent article indicates that such an argument is based on an incomplete understanding of the relativity principle, and states that the M stress energy tensor is not sufficient to define M momentum correctly. The study also claims that pointing vector does not represent the M power flow for a plane wave in an anisotropic medium if the pointing vector is not parallel to the wave vector, and states this conclusion is clearly supported by Fermat's principle and special theory of relativity. Formulation in terms of microscopic fields 
The microscopic version of Maxwell's equations admits only the fundamental field C and B, without a built-in model of material media. Only the vacuum permittivity and permeability are used, and there is no D or H. When this model is used, the pointing vector is defined as where mu0 is the vacuum permeability, E is the electric field, B is the magnetic flux density. The corresponding form of Poynting's theorem is where J is the total current density and the energy density U is given by where epsilon zero is the vacuum. Permittivity. It can be derived directly from Maxwell's equations in terms of total charge and current and the Lorentz force law only. The two alternative definitions of the pointing vector are equal in vacuum or in non-magnetic materials, where B equals mu zero H. In all other cases, they differ in that S equals 1, mu0 E times B and the corresponding U are purely radiative, since the dissipation term minus J E covers the total current, while the E times H definition has contributions from bound currents which are then excluded from the dissipation term. Since only the microscopic fields E and B occur in the derivation of S equals 1, mu0 E times B, assumptions about any material present are completely avoided, and pointing vector and theorem are universally valid, in vacuum as in all kinds of material. This is especially true for the electromagnetic energy density, in contrast to the macroscopic Balmy XH time averaged pointing vector. For time periodic sinusoidal electromagnetic fields, the average power flow per unit time is often more useful, and can be found by using the analytic representation of the electric and magnetic fields as follows. The average over time is given by the second term is a sinusoidal curve and its average is zero, giving examples and applications. Coaxial cable for example, the pointing vector within the dielectric insulator of a coaxial cable is nearly parallel to the wire axis. Electrical energy delivered to the load is flowing entirely through the dielectric between the conductors. Very little energy flows in the conductors themselves, since the electric field's strength is nearly zero. The energy flowing in the conductors flows radially into the conductors and accounts for energy lost to resistive heating of the conductor. No energy flows outside the cable, either, since there the magnetic field of inner and outer conductors cancel to zero. Resistive dissipation If a conductor has significant resistance, then, near the surface, of that conductor, the pointing vector would be tilted toward and impinge upon the conductor. Once the pointing vector enters the conductor, it is bent to a direction that is almost perpendicular to the surface. This is a consequence of Snell's law and the very slow speed of light inside a conductor. The definition and computation of the speed of light in a conductor can be given. Inside the conductor, the pointing vector represents energy flow from the electromagnetic field into the wire, producing resistive dual heating in the wire. For a derivation that starts with Snell's law C writes page 454, plane waves in a propagating sinusoidal linearly polarized electromagnetic plane wave of a fixed frequency. The pointing vector always points in the direction of propagation while oscillating in magnitude. The time averaged magnitude of the pointing vector is where m is the amplitude of the electric field and c is the speed of light in free space. This time averaged value is called a radiance and denoted E in radiometry, or is called intensity and denoted I in other fields. Derivation in an electromagnetic plane wave E and B are always perpendicular to each other in the direction of propagation. Moreover, their amplitudes are related according to in their time and position. Dependence is aware omega is the angular frequency of the wave and k is wave vector. The time dependent and position magnitude of the pointing vector is then in the last step. We used the equality epsilon 0 mu 0 equals 1 c2. Since the time or space average of cos 2 is 1 half, it follows that it will be appreciated that quantitatively the pointing vector is evaluated only from the prior knowledge of the distribution of electric and magnetic fields. 
which are calculated by applying boundary conditions to a particular set of physical circumstances, for example a dipole antenna. Therefore the E and H field distributions form the primary object of any analysis, while the pointing vector remains an interesting byproduct. Radiation pressure The density of the linear momentum of the electromagnetic field is S, C2 where S is the magnitude of the pointing vector and C is the speed of light in free space. The radiation pressure exerted by an electromagnetic wave on the surface of a target is given by static fields. The consideration of the pointing vector in static fields shows the relativistic nature of the Maxwell equations and allows a better understanding of the magnetic component of the Lorentz force. To illustrate, the accompanying picture is considered, which describes the pointing vector in a cylindrical capacitor, which is located in an H-field generated by a permanent magnet. Although there are only static electric and magnetic fields, the calculation of the pointing vector produces a clockwise circular flow of electromagnetic energy, with no beginning or end. While the circulating energy flow may seem nonsensical or paradoxical, it is necessary to maintain conservation of momentum. Momentum density is proportional to energy flow density, so the circulating flow of energy contains an angular momentum. This is the cause of the magnetic component of the Lorentz force which occurs when the capacitor is discharged. During discharge, the angular momentum contained in the energy flow is depleted as it is transferred to the charges of the discharge current crossing the magnetic field. 